Kerry's uh, hello, lovely Kerry. Good morning. Good morning. Can you see me? You can see me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just want to just issue a, a quick trigger warning. Kerry's going to talk about something that may be very upsetting to people. It's about forced vaccinations. Um, and uh, so I just want to give everybody a heads up just in case you just want to duck out for a second or in fact you want to stick around. So Kerry, obviously you contacted me and you said my mum has, has been given an, a forced vaccination. And I said, what do you mean? What do you mean? And uh, so we had a, 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 we've had a series of conversations now. And uh, I should tell you that uh, when I was saying to you yesterday, how do you pronounce uh, what your mum has? I found out this morning it's, uh, it's actually pronounced Guillain Barre. Right. Uh, but but we'll call it Gill and Barr. It's so much easier, isn't it? So, Kerry, let's go back to the beginning. And that is you came to me because your mum had been quite seriously coerced into a vaccination, even though your mum is really poorly. Um, let's start off from because one of the things that I really could relate to you very strongly, as you know, was the fact that your mum has been sick really most of your life. You're only 28. Let's talk about when you first realised there was a problem for your mum. You actually said yesterday about that sort of final walk you did with your mum. Can you, should we kick off there? Yeah. Um, so I have very few memories of my mum being well because it happened when I was so young. Um, but one of my last memories of my mum is she was so fit, active, healthy. She was a woman that always walked the roads. And she was coming home from a walk one night and she let me walk so far down to meet her. And we walked the rest of the way home. And that was the first and only time that I ever seen a shooting star in the sky. And I think that that's why I love space still to this day. And if I knew what was going to happen, I certainly would have made a different wish that night on that shooting star. And then very quickly after that, my mom deteriorated within a matter of, I would say, 24 hours. As I said, she was fit, active, healthy. And I found her crying in the bathroom one night. And um, obviously at the age that I was, I couldn't really comprehend what was going on, but I could tell by the fear on her face that something was definitely wrong with her. Yeah. And uh, Guillain-Barre, which she was later diagnosed with, is, um, it, I mean, it affects feet, hands, limbs. It's a rare and serious condition that, that affects the nervous system, obviously. Um, and, uh, and so fast forward a little bit. Your mum's had very, very difficult time throughout your life, extremely difficult time. And she was recently hospitalised, and that was when you discovered that she had been given a COVID vaccination. Tell us about that. Uh -huh. So uh, my mum was taken to hospital um, just ever since I have been small. She just has had a number of different ailments, including Gillenbar. Um, but she was in hospital on this occasion where you were not allowed in to see your loved ones, whether that was your mother or your cousin. It, it just did not matter. Now, my mom has the mentality of a child. My mom was in the hospital alone and was told by a nurse that she would die. She would die a horrific death. She would die alone. My mom doesn't have the mentality to understand COVID, not alone the COVID vaccination situation at the moment. It was never my wish for her to receive this vaccination. I was never once contacted about it by phone call, by letter. It was my mom that told me a few weeks later, very, very upset one night because she knew how I felt about it, but she knew it had got to a point where she had to tell me. Yeah, um, you know, the thing is, is that, so your mum was in a side room on her own. She was vulnerable. Uh, she hadn't tested positive for COVID. So the nurse came in, um, must have questioned her on her vac status. Um, mum said, no, I don't have the vaccine. And nurse said, basically, if you develop COVID, the situation you're in, you would die and you will die alone. And your mum was absolutely petrified, of course, that she wouldn't see you or your sisters again. Um, and the reason that I find what you have to say so compelling, Kerry, is not least because I have great empathy with you, because obviously my mum 
was sick throughout my childhood as well. So I understand the pain that comes with that. But also you have a very rounded knowledge of what's going on. You work for a nurse agency. You understand what's happening with medics uh, regarding the COVID jab. You've done a phenomenal amount of research. And one of the things you discovered is that the very thing that your mum has, Guillain-Barre, is actually a, an adverse side effect of the COVID vaccine. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you realized that? I first realized that uh, Gill and Barr can be linked uh, to any sort of vaccine. Um, when I got that bit older, obviously what happened to my mum happened when I was young and I didn't have the mentality to understand what was going on. But I could just never accept that a young, active, healthy woman could one day go from walking the roads right. to then being left paralyzed from the neck down. So I started to do my own research. And that is when I discovered that it can be linked to vaccinations. And that was just briefly before the COVID situation actually hit. Right. And then when COVID vaccinations started to um, be given out, then I could see in the media, online, any number of ways, I could see that people were now developing Gillen Barr shortly after receiving the COVID vaccination. Really scary. And of course, so your mum told you when she was at your house, you were furious, quite rightly, and uh, fired off a complaint to the hospital trust. Mm -hmm. uh, you said, you know, my mum's been in and out of, of hospital over the last year. She told me tonight during her last day, a nurse told her she would die if she did not take the COVID vaccine. So my mother took it without informed consent or con contacting me, her next of kin. Uh, she's a vulnerable adult with mental health issues. Uh, this is disgusting behavior, forcing an experimental vaccine on a disabled woman, scaring her into it without contacting her family. I expect a response. I mean, good on you, Kerry. So, so what was the response? Still to this day, Sonia, I am even waiting on a phone call. I get email responses stating that any correspondence that I have sent has been forwarded on to the appropriate department. Yeah. Still, I cannot get them to answer a phone call or provide me with a phone call. It seems like they're dragging their feet. I actually contacted the ombudsman and they stated that basically the best that the trust would be able to do is give me an apology. What good is that? They have injected my mother with a clinical trial, something that I believe can now cause Gillen Barr. What if she relapses? Any number of issues. Look at Lisa Shaw. There is many, many different situations where people are being affected by these vaccines. Yeah. And not positively, negatively. And that's what scares me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you have every right to. People are very upset for you, quite rightly, in the comments. Uh, shocking the way vulnerable people have been coerced and intimidated. Um, the, and uh, these are not the nurses that I remember. Absolutely, you know, um, lugger bugs, they'll jab anyone they can for the money. Um, a country boy killing people in care homes. Uh, Adifa, these medical staff have no idea what they are doing. Anyone can research this information. They just don't seem to care and are more concerned with keeping their jobs. And, th and that's true, isn't it, really? Is that what we're talking about is a complicity here. Uh-huh. And like I say, I work for a nursing agency. I'm really putting myself out there. I've never done you anything are. like this, but I don't care. People need to understand what is going on around them. It's not what they're telling you on the TV. And you need to look after the people that you have closest to you. Because if okay. this is happening to my mom, it's happening to other people. Yeah. And if, so your mum's now had two shots. And what you said to me is they're now on at her to take the booster on top of everything else. Uh -huh. I mean, so what I mean, what, what are you going to do about that? What can be done about that? I really don't know, Sonia. Like, I really am. Like, I still find myself sometimes like it feels like I'm still that child inside from years ago. I, I feel Absolutely. very lost, very confused about the situation like I say it was never my wish for her to have this I don't know where to go who to turn to and that's exactly why I came to you because I knew that you would help me get that story out there 
But oh, I tell you one thing, an apology is not going to cut it. And I am not going to stop. I am not going to stop until everybody has heard this story because they need to. They're not coming for children. My mom will never recover, but I could maybe help other people, maybe prevent yeah, yeah. this happening to someone that they love. Yeah, and uh, one of the things you said to me is you've seen a clear deterioration in your mum after the vaccinations. You talked about tremors, no longer able even to lift a spoon. Tell us about it. My mum, um, for the last several days, was actually with myself up until um, the day before yesterday. Um, she rang an ambulance. She was convinced that she was having a stroke. The ambulance took 45 minutes to come. I told you this yesterday. Now, thankfully, she wasn't having a stroke at that point. She has previously in the past. But if she had have been, she would have been left either in a very, very severe condition or maybe even worse. But my mom was with me for the last several days. And I seen her a few days before that. And I could notice the difference in her then. Her jaw is now just basically vibrating constantly. She can't hold a fork. She can't hold a spoon. My mom is 55 and I fed my mother the other night. My mother should not be in that condition. Yes, my mom is unwell, but she should not be in that condition. And day by day, I watch that woman get slowly but surely worse. So sorry to hear that. Absolutely, Matt. Medical staff have immunity from prosecution. Uh, Kerry, I really feel for you, it's terrible. Uh, country boy, tragic story, how many more like this? Lugabugs, we're living through the most tyrannical times in known history. Um, Dee, for so many stories like this and no coverage in the disgusting MSM. Scotch Miss, lovely Irish accent, sad topic, so sorry. Hospitals are dangerous places, always have been, it's just in the open now. Um, I mean, it's absolutely true. And one of the things you said to me was about your own awakening, because obviously, we thank you, Chris. Thoughts with you, Kerry. Good luck to you as you go forward with this. I, I mean, we talked about your awakening and how other people need to awaken to this. And one of the things you said to me, absolutely spot on, is you only have to look at history. You know, if the powers that be haven't cared about us in history, why should they suddenly be telling us the truth and doing things for our own good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you actually said something to me yesterday, Sonia, that really hit me. And I've never really thought about it in this way. But my mom has been ill for a quarter of a century. That's a long time, a long time. And not once in that quarter of a century have I ever seen anybody severely concerned about her within the NHS. Now, all of a sudden, they are concerned about people. My mom has had strokes. She's had mental health issues. Time and time again, she has maybe went to a &E and been turned away. Yeah. You know, these people, it's, they it, don't it, care about you. And, and now they're trying to convince people that they do. And it, it, that concerns me that more people aren't waking up to this. I can see why through the brainwashing that goes on within the TV, but turn the TV off, turn the TV off, listen to the people around you. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, Kerry, thank you so much for coming on. We will do whatever we can to continue to raise this and uh, raise awareness around this. Let's keep in contact. Let me know anything that a hospital say. You're very welcome to come back on and update us. And I should say, everybody, Kerry was really anxious and nervous to do this. This is not something that Kerry does, but she feels about it so passionately that she put aside all her own anxieties to do it. It wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be, was it, Kerry? I no. told you I'd hold your hand through it. Yeah. Uh, Lugger Bug, Bug says, yes, Kerry, spot on. Um, and uh, listen, Kerry, take very, very good care of yourself, my love. And uh, keep in contact with me. Let me know how it's going and we'll continue to raise awareness. And God bless to you and your mum. Okay. Thank you, Sonia. Take, take care. Take care. Take Bye. care, Kerry. Bye -bye. Thank you, Kerry. Hope you're back soon. Much appreciated. Thank you for telling your story, Kerry, says Peter. Take care, Kerry.